Understanding Counterparties in English. Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. Today, we're going to delve into an interesting and important term in the English language, counterparties. This term is widely used in legal, financial, and business contexts, but it can sometimes be confusing. Stay tuned as we break it down for you, ensuring that by the end of this video, you'll have a clear understanding of what counterparties are and how they are used in various contexts. Let's get started. At its core, the term counterparties refers to the entities or individuals that enter into a contractual agreement with each other. In simpler terms, if you sign a contract to sell something, you are a counterparty, and the person or entity buying from you is your counterparty. These parties can be individuals, companies, governments, or any entity capable of entering into legal agreements. The key aspect to remember is that counterparties are always on opposite sides of a transaction. In the world of finance and business, understanding counterparties is crucial. For example, in a loan agreement, the bank is one counterparty, and the borrower is another. In trading securities, the buyer and seller are counterparties to each other. This concept is fundamental in assessing risk, as the financial health and reliability of your counterparty can affect the outcome of the deal. Therefore, knowing who your counterparties are and evaluating their creditworthiness is a critical step in any financial transaction. The term counterparties also carries significant legal implications. Each counterparty has rights and obligations as outlined in the contract they enter into. Failure by one counterparty to meet their obligations can lead to legal disputes and require resolution through negotiation, mediation, or court proceedings. This highlights the importance of due diligence and understanding the legal framework governing the agreement. To put this into perspective, let's consider some everyday examples. Buying a house, you, the buyer, and the seller are counterparties in the property sale. Employment contracts, an employee and their employer are counterparties. Service agreements, when you subscribe to a service, such as an internet provider, you and the company are counterparties. These examples show that the concept of counterparties is not limited to complex financial transactions but is a part of everyday agreements and contracts. Thank you for watching, we hope this video has helped clarify the meaning of counterparties and shown how this concept plays a vital role in various aspects of our lives, from business and finance to everyday transactions. Remember, understanding the obligations and rights of each counterparty can help you navigate agreements more effectively and avoid potential conflicts. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing for more content. Until next time, take care.